Hello, Miss Bowserman and Miss Lee here from Crofton Elementary School to prepare you for what you will see on the elementary park math assessment. We are going to need your help by getting up and moving along as we explain the different types of questions you will see on the assessment. To get us started, we have some fun dance moves set to a familiar beat for you to follow along with as we introduce the item types. First, watch us demo how it's done. Hey, Miss Bowserman. Hey, yeah. Are you ready? To what? To park. Park what? Parksico. My hands are high, my feet are low, and this is how I parksico. My hands are high, my feet are low, and this is how I parksico. Don't give up. Don't don't give up. Don't give up. Don't don't give up. Now have a seat and let's learn how to use the tools in this question type. Each test will have multiple choice and multiple select questions. These items are similar, but have some important differences. Multiple choice items have three or four choices and allow only a single answer choice to be selected. As you can see, multiple choice items are represented by a circle. Watch me select my choice. Watch me make a change. Multiple select items require you to select more than one choice. Notice these questions have a square rather than a circle. Watch me select multiple choices. Now watch me change my choice. You may have multiple choice and multiple select as different parts in the same question. Remember, multiple choice are represented by a circle and multiple select are represented by a square. Our next question type is drag, drag. and drop. Let me show you how it works. Watch as I select and drag, then drop my answer into the answer box. Watch as I put a third answer into the odd numbers category. What happened to my answer? I would have to drag and drop an answer out of the odd numbers answer box before I moved another answer in. See, it's not too bad. Let me show you how the basic equation editor works. This item type has a lot of features, so pay close attention. The basic equation editor is not a calculator. It is a feature with math symbols for you to write your answers. In the basic equation editor, words are not allowed, only numbers and math symbols. Notice that as I put my cursor over a symbol, a black box appears with the name of that symbol. I'm going to start with 24 divided by 4. Watch as I type 24, then click the division symbol. Notice how a second box appears. Now watch as I enter the 4. The second box appears for all of the operation symbols, multiplication, division, subtraction, addition, and the equal sign. The comparison symbols work the same way. Now watch me change my choice. You can simply click backspace and type your answer in. Oops, no, I was correct the first time. The arrow keys are very important in the equation editor. The fraction symbol may also be new to you. Watch as I click on the fraction symbol first. Notice the two boxes. Watch how I enter the numerator now I need to use my arrow key to move down to the denominator. Then I need to hit the right arrow key to get out of the fraction. The arrow keys are what you use to move around an equation and to move out of fractions or parentheses. Mixed numbers are similar. Let's practice using the arrow keys. Watch as I enter a mixed number, 3 and 1 fourth. Don't forget, you need to press your right arrow key to move to the numerator. Then use the down arrow key to move to, to the denominator. Now that I'm finished, I will use my right arrow key to get out of the fraction box. Watch as I clear my screen. That was a lot of information. I hope you listened closely. If not, you can review this section again later. Let's move on to the Open Equation Editor. Unlike Basic Equation Editor, Open Equation Editor allows you to use words in addition to numbers and symbols. These symbols look familiar. 
Remember, we saw them on the basic equation editor. Now let's look at some of the unfamiliar symbols that you will only see on the open response editor. Let me show you the question mark symbol and the degree symbol. Watch me type 75 degrees in Florida. Make sure you read the questions carefully. Is the question asking you for only math or is it asking you to include both words and math? All right, on to fill in the blank questions. Remember when we talked about the equation editor? We demonstrated how to fill in a fraction. You will notice with fill in the blank, you cannot do that. Watch as I attempt to type in 7 tenths. Fractions cannot be entered in a fill in the blank item. Fraction answers must be entered as decimals. Also, don't forget to check for a scroll bar. The scroll bar is extremely thin. Do you feel that, Miss Lee? Yeah, it's getting hot. That must mean it's time to move on to hot spot items. Watch as I choose my hot spot. If I want to change my answer, I just click my answer again or select my new hot spot. Pay close attention to what the question is asking so you know how many hot spots you need to select. Hot spots, you are done and we are ready to hear about the next item type, inline choices, which is also known as drop-down menu items. Watch as I click on the arrow to see all my drop-down answer options. Watch me select my answer. This is how I change my answer. Inline choice questions? Check! And now for our last question type, coordinate planes. This last question type is only for fifth grade. All right, fifth grade, you may see coordinate plane items on your test. Coordinate plane items require selecting points on a graph. Watch as I plot point A. First I click on the A rectangular point button. Notice the color? Then I select the point on the coordinate plane. The color is the same. Notice as I plot point B, I have to first click the B rectangular point button and plot my next point. Watch how I change point A. Notice I have to click back on the point A rectangle. Now you have seen the different item types. Let's stand up and get the wiggles and anxiety out one last time with another special guest before we get to work. Hey, hey Dr. Dr. Arlotto. Hey, yeah. Are, Are you, you ready? ready? For what? To, to park. park. Park what? Parksico. My hands are high, my feet are low, and this is how I parksico. My hands are high, my feet are low, and this is how I parksico. Parksico, park, parksico. Parksico, park, parksico. Wow, that was awesome. Everybody get back to your seats in three, two, one. Now it is time to focus and show us what you know. Take a deep breath and good luck on your assessment. We know you will do great.